no one watches your social media page harder than these three types of people. Haters, competitors, and envious fake friends. I'm Cassandra Mack, founder of Strategies for Empowerliving.com, Cassandra Mack Ministries.com. For more information about my company, the ministry, books, inspirational merch, or one-to-one strategy sessions, you will see the link tree link in the video description box. You will also see a link for those of you who have been inquiring about the Wednesday Wellness Club, which is a feature of being a member of the Cassandra Mack channel at the second tier or higher. You'll see that link as well. So let's dive right in. So many of you reach out and in the comments you talk about this as well about people who watch your page hard like they act like they don't see you yet they watch all your stories and posts and you can tell when someone looks at your stories right you can you can uh, tell on uh, Facebook you can tell depending on the platform that you are on and this is why you will have a thousand views and ten likes (laughs) or a hundred views and one like so It's important to know that no one watches your page harder than haters, competitors, and envious friends. And so I want to dive in a little bit. I'm going to dive in a little bit as to why that happens. And then uh, in our membership, we're going to do a deep dive uh, at some point. So number one, they follow you to point out to their friends and badmouth you hoping to eventually hear some bad news about you. So you have some people who hate follow and they are hating you on the low or it could be open hate. Like, you know, you don't like each other. And anytime your name comes up and it can be, they constantly bringing your name up. Like they can't stop talking about you because you take up so much mental real estate. Right? So because they've been talking about you so much, it is going to uh, arouse the curiosity of their friend. Like who's this person they talking about? Oh, she got a social media page. She got a social media page. What are you talking about? So they will point you out and be like, see, she's not really that pretty. See, he's not really that successful. And you can fill in the blank of, of whatever the, that is. See, he's not really that annoying to see. She's not really that. I don't know why she's always talking about diet and exercise and she's not really that fit. So you can insert the adjective. But what will happen is that they are following you to point out to their friends, the people who, the people who hang with them. Uh, and they are bad mouthing you because they've been going on such a tirade talking about you. It, it does arouse the curiosity. Well, what's this person? Look like? What's the new girlfriend look like? What does the new wife look like? What does the new husband look like? Oh, she ain't cuter than you. No, she ain't cuter than you. Cuter than her. And let's see her kids. Oh yeah, you keep your kids. Your kids are more together than her kids. Her kids look a little sloppy. So what they're looking like, like under a microscope to fault find because it satisfies their desire to feel like they're better than you because they're hating on you for whatever reason, whatever it is that they're envious of, whatever it is that you are excelling at. And it can just be your peace of mind. And sometimes you don't even know this person. Oftentimes you don't even know. Sometimes a lot of times we know our haters, but there are times where you don't know. So you may be the new girlfriend who has no idea about the old girlfriend or the new boyfriend who has no idea about the old boyfriend, meaning you don't know this man from a can of paint. But he stay on your page talking about how your car is not all that, your your anything is not all that, whatever you're doing. So understand that that's one of the reasons why it happens. Also, your haters will follow you, number two, hoping to hear some bad news. Now, this is crazy because... As believers, this is hard to fathom when you are trying to live righteously, right? None of us are perfect. We all fall short of the glory, myself included. None of us are perfect. I can't stress that enough. We all all fall short of the glory. But when you are trying to do right and your heart, for the most part, is in the right place, we're not perfect. It's hard to fathom that just like you get up early in the morning to pray, Right. And to start your day with wisdom, with clarity, with power, with peace. And you get up and pray, you know, P-R-A-Y pray. And you might even pray for other people, pray for your friends, your family, your loved ones. Maybe you say a prayer for the world and your heart is in the right place. Right. There are people who wake up just as early as you, if not earlier, with the thought of how can I pray P-R-E-Y on people. You got scammers. <laughs> they wake up early in the morning looking for a scam, looking for a lick, looking who they looking to see who could be an easy mark that they can scam. So 
just how you are waking up early, right, in a place where you are going to God for guidance and you are thinking thoughts of your goals, your dreams, and the things that you're going to do to make your day meaningful and fruitful and productive. There are people who wake up with hate on their mind. I can't stand her. Maybe there's some bad news. I can't stand him. And they are looking to see that maybe there's some some sort of bad news you had a job loss you had a death in your family and this is hard to wrap your mind around because if your mind is not in a place where you are drawn to wickedness it is going to be hard to fathom that there are people on the planet right the bible tells us behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves therefore be as wise as a uh, as a serpent and as harmless as a dove and so in other words, you are not trying to harm nobody, right? That's as harmless as a dove. You are not waking up thinking, how can I pray P-R-E-Y on people and create hurt, harm, danger, create mayhem and havoc. That's not how you get down. That's not how you show up for life. But there are people who show up for life with that type of mindset from that spiritual place. It's important to understand that. It's so important that the scriptures say, behold, that means look, pay attention. It's not just a look, but it is pay, a, pay attention in a vigilant way. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. So as sheep, we are uh, sheep in terms of, for the believer, following the teachings of Christ, the master shepherd, right? So it says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. That word miss me, middle. So the wolves are going to be in the middle of your job. They're going to be in the middle of your family. They're going to be in the middle of your church. They're going to be in the middle of your friendship circle. They're not going to be people who you necessarily are not going to have an encounter with. They're going to be people that you are going to have an encounter with. It says, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, right in the middle, right in the middle. We're going to encounter some people with wolverine spirits, right? And so Jesus is speaking to his disciples, but as a believer, you are also a disciple. A disciple means a disciplined student within this context. It's a disciplined student of Christ. So when you are moving forward in the things of God and you are doing your best to follow the teachings, right, of the master shepherd, you're going to encounter, you're going to encounter some wolves. Now, a wolf is a predator. A wolf is a predator. A wolf will rip you to shreds. A wolf will rip you to shreds without a, a second thought. So when you're dealing with an individual who is hungry for power, hungry for validation, hungry to be the shiniest object in the room, hungry for attention, hungry for having to feel like they are the most successful one in the family, in the friend group, on the block, hungry for, and you can insert, insert the, uh, the blank, right, that, the particular characteristic, understand that you're going to encounter people like that. And so you will have people who are watching your page, hoping for some bad news, hoping to see you getting sick. This is hard to believe. This is why spiritual armor is important, putting on the whole armor of God, because spiritual warfare is real. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, right? But Christ came so that we can have life abundantly, and the thief uses people. <laughs> to steal, kill, and destroy. Uses even our own thoughts, our own emotions to steal, kill, and destroy situations. And so we can't be naive that just like there is a physical reality that we can see with our eyes and hear with our ears, right? And touch with our hands like when you touch a, a tree, right? There is a spiritual reality that we cannot see with our eyes, but we can discern with our spirit. And so when we begin to really realize that, it is not hard to fathom how no one watches your page harder than haters, competitors, and envious friends, that you can have someone that hate follows you. There's a whole term about hate following. Look it up. Google hate following. And you will see that people will follow people that they hate. Actually, actually. Oftentimes, even in social media, but in any uh, in any line of, uh, you know, where you're in the public eye, even at a very small uh, micro level, right? You have more haters usually than you do people that love you. And actually, a lot of times your haters will help you. Now, they don't want to help you. 
right? That's not their goal to help you. But a lot of times you're haters because if someone keeps talking about you, it's like a, a bad movie review and everybody's talking about how much they hate the movie, right? It arouses a person's curiosity. And like, you know what? I'm going to purchase this movie just to see what they're talking about. So the person who, who produced the movie, even though someone is, is watching it because they heard a lot of hateful comments about it, at the end of the day, they still prevail. You, you, you bought a ticket to the movie or, or the book that, you know, this is this. I hate this book. I want to burn this book. That is going to arouse someone's curiosity. So a lot of times your haters are not trying to help you, but they don't realize that inadvertently they absolutely do. Because when God has a plan for your life, this is the other piece. When God has a plan for your life, his plan is going to prevail. Haters cannot stop the plan of God for your life because whatever door God opens, no man can shut. Just like whatever door God shuts, no man can open. So that's number two. They're hoping to hear some bad news, to see some bad news. And, and they relish in that. They relish in that. There are people who actually uh, take pleasure in the misfortune and misery of others. Even though it is a wicked way of thinking, a twisted, sick way of thinking, there are people that actually relish and take pleasure in the downfall and the misery and the harm of others. And so don't be naive about that. So that's your haters, right? But then you have competitors. And sometimes you can have a competitor that you don't know is competing with you. We don't know what's in anybody's mind. Sometimes you can have so-called friends who are more, in reality, they're really your rivals, but they're posing as friends. And so when you have competitors watching your page hard on social media, a lot of times they will watch your page to copy your content, but they want to play it off like it was their idea. They don't credit you, but they are, they are uh, copying your idea to the T. They are copying, copying the way you do a particular thing to the T. And they are watching you because you are having success in that particular area. It is resonating with whoever you are called to, whoever you are called to. It is resonating. Your message is resonating. The way that you do a particular thing is resonating. And rather than trusting in the Lord concerning their own gifts because they are operating from scarcity thinking. They are operating from fully not trusting in the Lord because you can't tell me you trust in the Lord and you're copying what somebody does to the T. Because when you trust in the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your heart, you also trust that your gifts, your gifts, not Sally's gifts, John's gifts, Benita's gifts, Derek's gifts, your gifts make room for you. And you stir up your gifts that make room for you. But a lot of times a person is so, uh, so caught up in worrying about your gifts that they are not focusing on the potential, the untapped potential that God put inside of them. So a lot of times they're copying your content. And oftentimes, particularly for YouTubers, you, you will see this. But you don't have to be a YouTuber. It could be someone that just copies your style. And of course, right, if you are friends with someone, there's going to be some overlap. The reason that a lot of times you're friends with someone is because you have some commonalities and similarities. But there's a difference between having some similarities and somebody trying to be a carbon copy of you. Because we are not supposed to be carbon copies of each other. God made us as unique, one-of-a-kind souls. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us beforehand. So as God's workmanship, we are each like a, a personal work of art. No two souls are alike, just like no two people have the exact same DNA down to uh, the barest essence. And so if someone is trying to be you, that is not healthy. Again, there'll be some similarities. They may say, I like the way you do your hair. They may style their hair similar or the same way, or they may buy an outfit that you have. But when it gets to the point of, what's that movie? Single white female. Single white female with Bridget Fonda. And I believe it's, I always forget the other person's name. It's either Ali Sheedy or Jennifer Jason Lee. It's one of them. So... Bridget Fonda is this uh, a person who's kind of, you know, has a, 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 a good life. Things are moving forward in her life. Uh, she's attractive and, you know, she's just kind of doing her thing. 
and she takes in this roommate who becomes obsessed with her to the point of not only going after her boyfriend, but wanting to see her dead. And so it is not healthy when somebody wants your life. So there's a difference between being inspired by certain things that you do, and there are some commonalities and similarities, and somebody having the copycat spirit where they want your life, where they want to be you. It's like they're sucking your soul. That's not healthy. That's not even godly. So that's number three. Number four will be envious friends. So that's your competitors, right? So we talked about the haters, the competitors, the envious friends, which leads into point number four. So you will have envious friends that will watch your page because it is very difficult for some people, not everyone, I want to be very clear that there are wonderful people in the world who know how to rejoice when you rejoice, who can clap when you win. Absolutely. But you cannot deny that there's also another segment of the population where that is not the case. And so when you have a friend who's envious of you, but you don't realize, because sometimes envy doesn't rear its ugly head until you're in a situation where a person feels threatened by you. And so as long as you were at a certain place in life, at a certain level, you may have never triggered that friend's envy. It was always there, right? It was there. But you didn't trigger that because in that friend's mind, you'd impose as a threat. So I'm going to use weight loss because it is something very obvious that you can see. And then I'm going to use uh, another example. So I'm going to give you two different examples. And so this happens a lot with weight loss. We get so many people who write into us about this, that when you lose a significant amount of weight, like you shed a whole person, right? And you are still you on the inside, right? You still have your thoughts, your goals, your feelings, but now you have, uh, you have redefined uh, your, your physical body, right? Through, your, through the discipline of the things that you did to lose the weight. And... What you will notice is that a lot of friendships change. Sometimes even marriages break down as a result of one partner losing a significant amount of weight and the other partner not being able to handle uh, the, the attention that comes with that, the confidence that comes with that and so forth. And not to say that you cannot be a plus size person and be beautiful. Absolutely. Beauty comes in all sizes, just like it comes in all skin tones and all features. But the example that I'm using for this video for purposes of clarity is something you can visually see, because if you were 350 pounds and you are now 150, a person can see that with their eyes as opposed to an interchange, like they can't always see your peace of mind. Uh, they can experience it when they have an encounter with you, but a person can see physical weight loss in a video. They can see it even if you are down the block. They can look at you and physically see that with their eyes. So when that happens, right, you might have had a friend who felt like they were the cute one. They were the only cute one or they were the cutest one in the group. And they might not have felt threatened by you at 300 pounds. But now that you are 150, they feel threatened by you. And it doesn't mean you wasn't beautiful back then, but you didn't arouse their envy in the way that you do now. And so that characteristic might have been there, but you didn't experience it because you didn't trigger their envy at that time in your life. Or it could be that you had a friend who was always considered the successful one of the group, whatever that looks like. So let's say this person, you know, got an advanced degree. We're going to use that. There's many ways to be successful, but we're going to use something tangible. So you got an advanced, this friend has an advanced degree, but they have the, they're the only one of the group that went to college and they are considered the smart, successful one of the group. And doesn't mean that the other friends aren't smart and successful in their own right, but everybody kind of looked up to this person. And now you go back to school, you get some sort of certification in a particular area of study, and now you are making strides and you start to see the envy. It could be, I've seen this in ministry. It could be that you had a friend who was the leader of the prayer group and this person, everybody came to them for prayer. 
And as you began to grow in confidence and grow in your relationship with God, you began to pray and you pray with power, you pray with anointing and people in the church started coming to you and asking you to pray too. And now the person who uh, everybody used to come for to ask this individual for prayer. Now people still ask her for prayer, but they're asking you too. And now she got an attitude with you because people are showing you honor because they're honoring your anointing and she's envious or he's envious. So it can happen even with prayer. This happens in ministry groups and people are baffled and dumbfounded. So don't be. This is human nature. And if you understand human nature, then when humans start showing you their nature, then you know how to move with them. But when you don't understand human nature, you can find yourself baffled saying, I don't understand. When in reality, a lot of times we say we don't understand, but we really mean I'm not ready to accept. We say, I don't understand how she could be jealous. How do you not understand? Like you can see it, right? And we know people by their fruit. So if they're showing you the fruit of envy, then it's not a comprehension issue. It is an issue where we don't want to accept it because we have history with this person or they're related to us. So it, it would be clearer to say, I'm not ready to accept or this is hard to digest. But it's not that you can't intellectually understand because you have a sound mind. So when you have a, a person who is envious of you, a lot of times they will watch your page so hard and they will never ever share they will never ever ever show you love now they may privately say girl you doing your thing i'm so proud of you dude you doing your thing i'm so proud of you but they will never publicly uh support you they will never publicly share your stuff they will never say a positive comment uh, and you can see they, they read your stories like you can see this they will not and they will share everybody else's stuff but yours because it is a way of them trying to diminish you by saying, I don't see you. And that's their right, right? You can never argue another person's right. It is their right not to support you if they do not want to support you. But at the same time, you also have the right to decide how you want to move forward concerning that relationship. That is your right once you are made aware once it is in your field of awareness how they get down with you it is your right also to make some adjustments in that relationship so you both have rights they have the right not to support you you have the right to decide what type of people you want to have a close relationship with whom you consider friends that is your right so with that being said don't be shocked when you find that no one watches your page harder than haters, competitors, and envious friends is part of the journey. So I want to give you a scripture as we close out. And it's Hebrews 12 and 1, chapter 12, verse 1. And it's basically run your own race. So it says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So essentially, right, you got to run your race. So don't worry about the competitors. Don't worry about the haters. Don't worry about the envious friends, run your race. Lay aside every weight so you can run your weight, your, your race. And sometimes it is laying aside the weight of a fake friendship. Sometimes it is laying aside the weight of worrying about what haters think. Sometimes it is laying aside the weight of driving yourself nuts because you have a competitor that is trying to copy you the thing you got to remember is even if somebody regurgitates your words even if somebody tries to copy your style they can never be you they can never be you and there is going to be a segment of the population who is not 
going to resonate with them because they're going to feel that something is off and that something is off. The, the thing that is off is that it is not original. So there will be people who will see that. But the, the bigger piece than that, there's something bigger than that, is that no one could ever really truly copy you because what God has for you is for you. Now, if it's a legal issue and it's a copyright issue, do what you need to do. You, you have rights. Do what you need to do. But what I'm saying is don't spend so much of your time ruminating on an individual who is copying you. If you need to address it legally, do that. But then keep moving forward. Do what you need to do, but keep moving forward. Don't get stuck in that. Handle what you got to handle. And move forward in the things that God has for you. Lay aside every weight. Every weight. Don't get ensnared, right? And the sin which so easily ensnares us. So that word sin means to miss the mark. And anytime we're giving haters our, our energy, we're missing the mark. Anytime we are so angry with a, with a friend who is envious and they won't support us, we're missing the mark. We're missing the mark because the mark is your goals and your dreams. The mark is moving your life forward. It is not the envious friend. Make a decision about the envious friend. If you're going to cut the person off, do what you got to do. You are allowed to cut people off who are not meant to walk with you. The Bible is clear. Come out from among them. So there's some people in your life where it's time to come out from among them. You ain't got to be nasty. You don't have to argue with people. You don't have to have long drawn out conversations and explanations when you've grown. You can just choose to, you know what, I'm going to put some distance there. I'm going to come out from among this person. You could choose to have a conversation without the drama. You will figure the specifics out as you are led by God. But the point is, run your own race and run it with endurance. Run with endurance. Run with perseverance. Run with tenacity. Run with persistence. Keep putting one foot in front of the other towards your purpose and destiny, towards living your blessed life. And know that you will have the haters, the competitors, and the fake friends watching your page super, super hard. And this is why you'll see a hundred views and one like or a thousand views and 10 likes absolutely those be your haters i got them too haters competitors and fake friends but if we realize that god has a purpose for us and the haters competitors and the fake friends cannot stop what god has for us so keep your head up keep moving forward keep god first so couple of announcements and then I want to also make sure to invite you to church by phone if you'd like to worship with us by phone so uh, church by phone happens every Sunday for more information you can go on our ministry website CassandraMacMinistries.com we also have a Wednesday wellness club where we focus on wellness and mental health mental fitness mastering our emotions emotional resilience self-care and uh, the Wednesday Wellness Club meets the first and third Wednesday of every month by telephone conference call. And it is a feature of being a member of the Cassandra Mac YouTube channel at the second tier or higher. And it is cheaper than therapy and it is very therapeutic. So if you are in a place where you would like more support, like support that, you know, goes beyond whatever it is that uh, you are getting. If you would like more deep dives that go beyond these public videos, I would encourage you to be part of the Wednesday Wellness Club where you get to connect with like-minded people focusing on their five G's, God, growth, our goals, our greatness, and bringing God glory through our life and our legacy. You know, atmosphere is important. Environment is important. And sometimes the reason why we can't get to our next or we are stuck in a particular place and we cannot figure out the next step has a lot to do with environment that we are not around the type of people who are going in the same direction. Even if you have different goals, they're going in the direction of positivity, fruitfulness, and productivity. And that's important because so often we have so much negativity around us, even negative family members, nobody really uh, cheering us on. And that can take a toll mentally. 
and it can make you prematurely give up on your dreams. And so the benefit of being part of the Wednesday Wellness Club is that you are in a safe space with like-minded people who are about uh, their positivity, about their productivity, and they ain't got time to be hating on you because they're too busy reaching and stretching for their God-inspired goals and dreams. So if that sounds like something you'd like to be part of, I would encourage you to become a member of the Cassandra Mac YouTube channel at the Second Tier or Higher. Thirdly, two books I would recommend for those who are serious about their level up and success. Number one is Speaking Life Into Your I Am. That is a book of Bible-based affirmations that take 25 scriptures stick, uh, straight from the Bible that speak to who we are in God. And what the book does is it shows us how to affirm each of those scriptures so we show up as that person. So when the Bible says things like we're fearfully and wonderfully made, what does it mean to show up as a person who truly believes they're fearfully and wonderfully made? How would you handle criticism if you truly knew that you were fearfully and wonderfully made? How would you handle haters? How would you handle people coming at you sideways if you know that you're fearfully and wonderfully made? It's a game changer. So that's speaking life into your I am. Second book is Unleash Your Unstoppable. Now that is a book of prayer, scriptures, and very specific success strategies to transform your life for victorious living. We know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And so this really helps us to begin to walk in the power of that. Unleash your unstoppable. So uh, those books are available at Amazon. Some of my books are available at Barnes and Nobles as well as Walmart. So have an amazing day, everybody be blessed and uh, let's say a quick prayer I just feel led to pray for those of you who are moving forward towards your goals and your dreams whether it's health whether it's mental well-being peace of mind whether it's uh you know changing your diet whether it's getting a handle on a particular health condition and you are surrounded by a lot of negativity it could be negative things spoken to you when you were a child and it's hard to get that out your head or it might be your current situation and I want to encourage you through prayer. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice who has a goal or dream, something positive and productive that they are working on. They're trying to change their life for the better. Perhaps they're moving forward in their sobriety and they're getting off drugs or they're getting their children back or they're doing something to move their life in the direction of healing, in the direction of fruitfulness, Father God, and they have a lot of negativity around them. I want them to be reminded, Father God, that greater is he who is in each and every one of us. Greater is the Christ in us than he who is in the world, than the haters, than the naysayers, than the dream slayers, than the negative people. Help us, Father God, to continue to strain forward towards what lies ahead and to leave behind what is behind us so that we can keep putting one foot in front of the other. Help us to do as you say in Hebrews 12 and 1, to lay aside every weight, the weight of negative thinking, the weight of worrying about what people will think, the weight of caring about whether or not a hater validates us, the weight of uh, not having friends and family to show us love and support. Help us to lay aside those things and to focus totally on purpose and destiny. Help us to lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us. We don't want to miss the mark. We don't want to miss the things you have for us. We don't want to miss our joy. We don't want to miss our peace. We don't want to miss our success. We don't want to miss our prosperity. Let us run, not just walk, but run with endurance, Father God. And when we feel weary, we ask that you give us an eagle level strength, that we can mount up with wings like eagles so we can continue to soar even when life tries to knock us down, bring us down, kick us down and defeat it. And even if we fall down, help us not to stay down so that we can run with endurance, the race that you set before us as we race towards who we are in you, as we race in our relationship with you, Father God, through Christ. We seal this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know who needed the prayer, but I just felt led that there's somebody under the sound of my voice that's dealing with the weight 
of negativity and it's really getting you down and doing a Jedi mind trick on you. So hold on to that prayer. Pray it over and over again if you need to and touch and agree with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Remember to be a blessing wherever you go. Talk to you soon. I love you all. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Thank you to the members of the Cassandra Mac YouTube channel. Thank you to those who are subscribed to this channel. And if you are not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. Take care.